Welcome everybody to the special meeting of the City City Council of the City of Pearsall. Today is September the 6th, 2018. The time now is 7, 703. Uh, Madam Secretary, may, may I have a roll call, please? Mary Moore. Robert Lillard. Here. Richard Gondar. Present. Sonia Nandas. Brandon Lillard. Here. Juliana Hernandez. Here. Ben Bristol. Here. Daniel Frazier. Here. We have quorum. Um, let's stand for our, our invocation and pledge allegiance. Dave, would you like to lead us in the invocation? So does the Father. Father God, we thank you for all the good work that has been done. Their phone, please. The first thing on the agenda today, we have uh, have a public hearing uh, regarding uh, the possible annexation of 215.11 plus or minus acreage in the city of Pearsall. I need a motion to entertain, please. Thank you. Second. All in favor. Okay. Mr. Mayor, folks, and council, um, this is public hearing number one for the proposed phase three of the annexation project. Um, I do not see that we have anybody here to discuss it, but we'll go through it briefly. Uh, you guys have been through it once before, but we'll talk about it real quick. This annexation is the final step in, in what we started doing earlier in the year. Um, this would be solely for the purpose of annexing the Steck power plant property. Um, this was included in phase two, but because of the little concern over the technicality with the notice, uh, we did not finalize it in phase two and made it a phase three to do as a standalone. Um, the timing on it, uh, there's, no, we, there's no sales tax on this, so it's property tax. We have to be done by January 1st if we're going to do it. Um, so that it would be available for property tax in the following year. Uh, 215.11 acres. Um, not only did we send out notices for this annexation, um, we knew. So part of the problem was when we sent last time, the address that they have, the appraisal dish was wrong. Uh, which fits, that's their responsibility to fix that, not ours. We knew we were going to get the letter back again, so I had our chief of police. Um, hand deliver the notice of the annexation to them this time. We have signed notice that they received the, the notice of annexation. So, as far as notice goes this time, we have no question uh, that they received proper notice. Um, so, that's that's the map there. There'll be everything between Power Line Road, everything between that road and, uh, and, and uh, Interstate 35 um, that's owned by Stack All the property right there. Um, in the previous annexation, we're Real quick note here. In the previous annexation, this area right in here, um, the city property that was annexed as part of phase two. Um, so our city property that we have right here, we also above this as part of the annexation. Then of course, this stuff across the road was annexed in phase two as well. So it's continuous uh, to that property. Um, as far as the service plan goes, the service plan for phase three is, is the service plan open, Crystal? Yes. Um, the service plan for phase three will be the same service plan as the service plan we've had for the other areas. Um, once we finalize or choose to finalize or not finalize phase three, that's what we want to start talking to everybody to see and see what we want to do. I have one or two people come forward so far in phase one and phase two talking about maybe they might want a sewer, maybe they might want something. Um, but again, we talked about you know, we're going to let them, let them as a group decide if they want the, the sewer. Most of them already have water. Nobody out there wants gas because there was a gas out there, so their houses aren't set up to use to utilize the natural gas. Um, but it would include all the other stuff that there was included. There would be uh, in, in the service plan that talks about them having access to the fire department, police, um, building inspections, planning and zoning, our library, uh, street maintenance, storm water management, uh, street lighting, water service, so it took sanitary sewer, which is the one we talked about, that we'll, we'll make the city of that afterwards, solid waste service, natural gas utility service, which we know we don't know what he's going to want, um, emergency medical service, which they have right now, but it would be our responsibility. And they would have access to the, the parks, playgrounds, and swimming pools at some point. With all that stuff added out there, we may look into it at 
additional park or something out there when we have some additional resources to do it. Um, and then, of course, our other municipal services, municipal board, that kind of thing, they would have access to those. The other services would we offer here at City Hall. Um, so I'd like to have for questions. Um, I don't know. I mean, you guys have heard this before a number of times, so I don't know if we can spend much time. Question. Uh, you mentioned that we would get property tax and not sales tax. Yeah, there's no problem. They are exempt from sales tax. They are exempt. They are exempt from sales tax, yes, sir. But the property tax off of that property is about $650,000 a year based on their value. Based on their what? On their value, on, the, on, their, on their valuation. About 650, of course, it depreciates, and so each year it drops a little bit, but it's about, it was about 650,000 was what their value was, what the taxes at our current tax rate would have been on their value for this year. Is that with the old power plant? Because I know that you know, they have an old power plant and they have a, a new area. Is that? It's the entire property, and so it includes any improvements that they have on the property. So the, the property values are actually like next to nothing. I mean, it's, it's a very small amount. The taxable value is all improvements. Uh, that improvements to a seventy five hundred dollar improvement. The, the taxable value is improvements. And we get all. Do you plan to hire more city employees and more police officers? If we get this done, that, I mean, that, that part of the reason that we looked at the three phases of the annexation was to be able to go back and replace some of the positions we lost here and add in where we need to add in more. Uh, of course, now we're a year away from being able to get the money from the tax part. Um, and that's, that's one of the things of annexation. You normally take on some responsibility before you get before you get the revenue source from it to do it. So yeah, at some point, we'll probably have to look at and that we already provide water to this facility. Um, that was one of the things we gave when they first started. They didn't want gas, and we have we actually have sewer lines not too far from there. So um, the services to this to this annexation for example. How many how many police officers do we have right now, and how many do we normally have? Fifteen. Fifteen. Right. We had seventeen before, and uh, we lost. And what we, we had 17 plus an animal control. <coughs> now we have 15 and an animal control. So, and how is that animal control thing going? Uh, With, because um, he isn't he supposed to be doing animal control and the the code, code compliance. the code compliance? Uh, yes, um, we haven't had we haven't been able to get him to do code compliance. Um, he's struggling with animal control um, because we ask him to do. Uh, a lot of police work also. And so we're kind of, as far as animal control is, we're kind of reactionary as opposed to proactive, uh, which means if you call us because you have a dog problem, we'll go out there and take care of you. But to say he's actively out there, although today we got a bunch, but um, he's having to respond to his regular calls for service and run traffic and uh, traffic enforcement. And then on top of that, we have him doing animal control, getting out the shelter, it's it's difficult now we did have another guy that was doing that along with him that we also got certified but he resigned and we lost him so we have 15 right now. so is that when, when when you say he resigned and you you had uh, trained him or you yeah. had sent him to get trained yeah. and so how much does that cost us um, I believe it was about five hundred dollars for the training certification and how long did he stay uh, Four months, five months. Wow. The problem is they're they're not. Um, I guess even my current guy, he, he's asking that hey, if, if a spot comes open, can I make a transfer out of this? Because this is not what I really want to do. Um, the the guy that you have right now. The current guy, yeah. And so <coughs> I don't think anybody wants to do the job. We're just we're we're trying to make do the best we can for what you guys want us to do. So basically, he's doing three jobs: the animal control, the code compliance, and he's also responding to calls. Yes, ma'am. Wow. So originally, we had another position in the budget. Um, mm -hmm. If you guys remember last year, we had two of those positions in the budget. The second one was approved in the budget, but it was based on us receiving a grant right. that we thought there was no way we couldn't receive the grant. Um, historically, those grants go to the smaller communities that need more help. For some reason last year, all those officers under that grant program went to San Antonio, Dallas, and Houston. Um, no small communities got them. Um, so that, that grant process will come around again this year as well. And I mean, I don't see how they're going to do that two years in a row, how they're going to give it just to the bigger communities and not 
um, and not help the smaller communities with that. So I think we have a really good chance at, at adding a position with the grant there as well. Um, you know, we, we've, we've added in a lot of responsibilities on a lot of employees because we are short on we're down. We're down employees um, from what I got here uh, by about 13 or 14 positions right now. Um, and so that's one of the things, one of the purposes for doing this stuff is to try to, to, try to get the revenue source back um, where we can do that. Um, we have, when they had that number of officers they had before, we had $3.5 million a year in sales tax too. Um, and we dropped to $2 million. And so everybody had to take cuts. Um, you know, that's, that, that was part of the issue. Um, and we can, you know, we, we, we're trying to, to make our positions where they're competitive and we do retain people and we keep people because we can continue to cut salaries and leave salaries where they're at and add more positions and people are going to come and go. Um, because they're not going to make what they can make working for the county or what they can make working the whole field or something else. So we've got to get to where we we're at a point, that's the whole thing with the ADD plan where it's done where there's an incentive for them to stay here and what they make and not to go take the first job they get with. I mean, we lost another employee of this week, same thing. Um, comparatively to what that person makes in other cities around us, the person that we had was pretty well underpaid, and so I got two week notices because she got an offer someplace else. Um, that doing, this, doing basically the same thing would make more money. Um, so, I mean, that's part of, that's part of this whole thing. And when it was when it was $3.5 million, we had a bunch of positions there, which was a good thing. I mean, they were necessary positions, but when you don't have that sales tax revenue, what are you going to do? Got to cut a million and a half someplace, and it doesn't change our power bills, it doesn't change any of that. Regardless, we have to somehow get all this annexation done so we can. This is, this add, is, a, big, this is a big step for us being able to. This, this is a huge step. Add employees. On the annexation uh, council, is is there anything that STEC could come back with? An injunction or any kind or anything? Because they didn't show up or very well, proper notice? So yeah, well, it seems like they covered their bases if they did that home delivery. Okay, so they're not. Well, they're not exempt. They're not exempt from the state of 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 the state so once they're inside our board, they're responsible to pay us. Um, what, what was their dispute at, uh, from the very get-go? Uh, was it because of sales tax, or they felt they felt they were exempt, or, or what, what was their, their basis? Their attorney sent Bobby an email basically saying they were exempt from tax under a statute. That statute was sales tax. It didn't have anything to do with property tax. Um, but that made us start digging back through there, and, then we, and, and he made the comment that he had heard about it from somebody saw it in the paper because they never received their notice. And then so we got to look and it's like, well, we got the notice back, but it was the wrong address, that's their fault. It's like, you know, this is making it clean. We've got till January 1st, let's make sure there's no way for them to come back and try to get us. Um, because I would assume that they thought there was a way they could try to do an injunction. They'd wait till the last minute or we're going to push it one more year down the road. And what does STEC stand for and who manages it or who, who runs it, who owns it? South Texas Electric Co-op, they have a board. A board, yeah. Is that a local board or state? Victoria. There are local people on the board. Yeah. I don't know how that board is completely made up. It's stakeholders, or it's shareholders, and, and I think there's a local, at least one or two local people on the board as well. I think they're based out of Victoria. Yeah. 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 yeah, they're not, they're, it's not, they're making money off of us. They're not living here. Yeah. And I will, I will tell the council one other thing with that, with, uh, just, just for your information, since we do have a few extra minutes of this one that we can use. Um, one of the things that I talked, a couple of you weren't here at the time we talked about this, but one of the other things that I talked about with uh, with, with STEC was looking at the possibility of entering into them with a pilot, enter, entering into a pilot agreement with them rather than annexing them. A pilot agreement is payment in lieu of taxes. So basically we could enter into an agreement with STEC and say, okay, we're not going to annex you, but in, for us not annexing you, we want you to pay 90% of what you would pay in sales tax per year, property tax per year, 80%, some number. Um, that's a little bit less than what they're going to pay if we annex. A um, couple of purposes there. One, if we don't annex them, they give us a pilot agreement, we don't have a responsibility for providing any services to them. So that saves us some money. Um, two, it saves them some money because they could negotiate, you know, they could try to negotiate 90%, 85%, whatever of that rate. And so they're saving that percentage every year in the life of that pilot agreement. Um, when we got in the budget process and, and figured out that it was a year part of down the road before we were going to get that tax, I reached out to their uh, attorney and asked the, the attorney to um, have somebody from the company call me to 
see if we can get them to agree to a pilot agreement thing, or to try to get them to agree to a pilot, pilot agreement. Purpose of that being that if we could get them to agree to a pilot agreement beginning in 2019, that they would give us a payment next year. Um, so they would they would pay one year under the pilot agreement, but they would not have paid under annexation. But if we did it at 90%, 10 years, they make that up, and then the rest of their lifetime after that, they're ahead. So from a business from a business model standpoint, it would have been a wise choice for them to do it. Who's ever have response? So I guess it's they're looking short term instead of long term, uh, and maybe it's because they don't. I don't know what their budget cycle is. That payment under this budget may not fit, um, and now they'll, now they'll know what the annexation, what their payment's going to be next year, and they can go with their budget. Just like it could have just disappeared a bit of budget this year. I don't know, um, but I would assume they probably won't. they have enough money to do the pilot if they don't want to. So we've given them every opportunity um, to try to work with us on this. And Excuse me, uh, for the record, um, Mayor um, Moore, uh, Mr. President. 720. So that's uh, that's basically the last thing that I was thinking of like, Okay, Council, is it ethically legal to offer them a power agreement if we haven't offered anyone else power agreement? No, we can we can reach other people. For individuals. And then I mean this this was a separate phase, so it was everybody in that phase too. There was also another yeah. option that they could have asked us for, which would have been to create a, um, what's it called, the district? Uh, no, the business district. Like a utility, it's not a utility district, it's a, mm -hmm. where you build all your businesses. What are they called? Industrial? Business district. Industrial. Industrial. They could have come to us and asked about doing that industrial district because there are ways that you can establish uh, a lower uh, tax rate within an industrial district, kind of like you know where they didn't ask for that. So we, 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 we left the door open for them to come and talk to us. Can't make a talk to us. Two questions, Deacon. I guess one, I'd like to just throw this out to the council and see what, what what the pleasure of the council is to entertain this thought. But you know, we've got these three tracks of land, um, and it's, it's going to generate revenue X, whatever it is, a million dollars a year, with it with total in that can be determined exactly. But we can utilize that, leverage that, and go ahead and um, get uh, funding to put in the water and sewer we, we can do that and so my thought is you know for few, I mean sooner or later maybe 10 years maybe five years maybe one year maybe 20 years but people are gonna need services out there want services out there and future councils are gonna have to go through this um, and so what you know ultimately in order to put that to develop which then could bring in more businesses and so thought would be is um, and it's the two-part statement is one you know I know we're going to talk to the citizens and see if they have a desire to do that but then but then B um, why not look at go ahead and putting that in there so it's there and then and then the funding can come in order to pay the bond back through through this and again it'd be whatever the cost is 1.3 you know spread over 20 years you know so you're talking about a hundred thousand a year or whatever you know whatever those numbers are. so that's 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 just a thought to have that conversation with the council but then but then B is whatever we decide to do um, you know the things that we talk about a lot is just making sure that the citizens know what it is and so the word is gonna be hey we annexed all this stuff and we didn't get anything returned well I want to make sure that that we go no look this is this is what it is this is what you're getting you know and 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 if it is that it's not a sewer system it's not a completed water system we just need to state that no that that's not part of the deal i mean citizens out there if you want it yeah hey let us know and that'll be part of the equation but if not we just we just really need to make sure in every median source that we have that we get that out there that th this is what the deal is so that's, a, that's an excellent point 
um, is if you're going to look at you know, there's some vacant lots out there, and there's lots that probably aren't at the highest and best use. You know, some of those people have smaller businesses or whatever, <coughs> or someplace else. To that. So putting that service in. Now, one of the things I talked about with staff is that we've got basically three things: gas, water, and sewer. Is what we're talking about that we, need, that we need to do. Um, as far as the gas goes, I, unless somebody requests it, those and nothing set up out there to use our gas because the gas wasn't there. So they're all set up. You know, like. Um, we went all the way down to Borden with our gas already because they needed gas for the for the for the peanut dryer. So we've got gas way out there. So it's pretty easy if somebody else comes in and wants gas. We you know another big business like Borden, or not Borden, Birdsong, 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 is we have money in the budget every year for water line extensions for other stuff that goes in there. So there's there's a little bit of money built in the budget each year to so let's just go ahead and each year do a part of it. We don't need you know we don't necessarily need to bond that because our water goes by ways out there already. A bunch of the properties we've had already have one. Mm -hmm. um, so we can go ahead and get that extended get moved together. We can do that, the city group can do that. You know, we don't need to worry about that. The one thing that was that we would have to look at would be the wastewater. And of course like we talked about the reason the wastewater got a little bit more expensive was because it takes two lift stations because right. it does this as you well. So we can look at doing that in phases or doing whatever. Um, and, and that reduces the cost significantly over what we talked about too. And so to the point where we can probably fund that out of our, if we, once we get this done, we get away from stealing from the utility fund every year to pay the general fund, then we can probably fund that utility fund. We probably don't have to walk. But we should be able to fund that payment out of the utility fund. And now you don't have to worry about that. But that's, that, was the whole, that was the whole concept of doing this and getting away from that transfer. So when we need to do water projects, sewer projects, gas projects, we have money to do it each year. We don't have to borrow and borrow and borrow and borrow and figure out how to pay back. Um, those funds should be generating enough revenues to expand the system. That's part of what we're supposed to do. We're almost there. We're pretty close. That $800,000 deficit's almost gone. Um, you know, we got a zero. You know, we, we know we're going to get there next year, but it's going to be zeroed out. We're actually going to be starting to build up something in that in that fund, and then we can use that to, make, to do the same. Mm -hmm. Will they be getting the trash pickup as well out there? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Soon as it's done, soon as it's official, thirty days after it's approved, then they're responsible. Okay, so we have. Four minutes till the next one has to stop. Any more questions? You, have you say you have, have a question? Second. You have a question? Workshop. Oh, okay. <laughs>